Um, okay. Welcome everyone to our discussion of Darkair Talmud. Uh, today, Bezit Hashem will be doing a CM. Um, of course, a CM just means uh, that we'll have to go back over the 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 the, uh, the safer. But the point is, Baruch Hashem, that we've seen again this attempt to categorize the various moves of the Gemara, and as we mentioned many times, the the Yisakapenton wants to do it in the language, he's much more concerned in the language and in the style of the Gemara, how it presents its information. So let's do the last chapter here, Simon Tesva. He says, Ein l'havi raya ulasos kol kach ikar misvaras hamaksha u mehamdamasav. He says, don't bring proofs. If you're now, now we're talking about building your Torah world. Now, what do you build on? What do you use to build your, your Torah understanding? So he says, don't, don't bring proofs or hold as essential the Svara of the Makshin and, uh, and his premises. Okay. Although the Makshin is very powerful, because as I, I said, usually he's talking about the, the simple, what you see is what you get, Pashtus of the language. But we're going to move off that position. So in order to get a true understanding of the, the message of the Torah, we're going to have to move from the Havamina to the Maskana, and that's the world that we're going to have to hold when we go through the rest of Shas. Okay? So although it says Hashem put his hand in Mitzrayim, we're going to reject that. And we're going to say it just means a strength. So don't try to bring proofs from the Havamina, only from the Maskara. So that's what he says. Wrote some Mami Mashim of Farish Hamaksha O Sova Bamama. Don't bring proofs or hold that concept. I mean, you can keep it in your head because that was the Havamina, but don't, when you're building your, your, halakhic uh, reality, so to speak, so then you have to go to according to the Mishkana. Okay, so don't, his, his, his uh, Havaminas were rejected, so we're not going to hold on the rejected position. So don't, don't um, hold his Svaras, or the svaras that he, he brought up in order to ask his kashas. Because al harov ain halacha vahamaskana kamosa. Because most of the times, the, the very interesting principle he says, the halacha and the conclusion is not like the maksha. Okay, now sometimes we do have hard debate. Sometimes the position, sometimes the maksha is so strong that the, that the, the proponent has to back off. That does happen. But he says most of the times the conclusion of the Gemara is, is the conclusion, and that's what's going to be used as the principles that are going to guide us throughout the rest of Shas. When you are going to ask a kasha, or you're going to bring a proof, if you're going to bring a proof to someone, or ask or, 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 or to, to something or someone's position, you have to bring it from the, from the conclusion of the Gemara. And what, the, what remains, sometimes there's a debate, a heated debate, and certain Mr. A has to lose some points, and Mr. B may have to lose some points until they get to the final reality, meaning that they have to change their positions until they finally get their, their, their final position spelt out. So you, you always have to look. Now, you always have to build on the end. You can't ask kashas from a Havamina, because that Havamina was rejected. Why? Because you have to know, in the debating process, uh, they're going to switch their svaras. The svaras start switching. Things are rejected, and things are accepted, and things are modified. And, and sometimes the proponent agrees to the uh, opponent, and sometimes vice versa. Okay, ulusoflo yishar okay. So don't go from the beginning, because you only start in the beginning. You won't get the true picture, which is the maskana. Okay, not the only picture, because we have to know how we get there. But it is the true picture. 
ki lo hodu ze leze rak letzarach because sometimes the uh, the proponent or the opponent will agree to his uh, opposite to his foil only for the moment. He says, "I could even agree with you on this point, but blah blah blah." And then all of a sudden, you find out that that agreement was only that he'll come back and he'll say, "But now I'm going to show you what I agreed to you also is wrong." Okay, so you always have to understand the maskana and what comes out at the end, and then then you say that the, the Gemara is built on the conclusions. Uh, that's what it says, may you cover my ulu self my, you will cover my self or himself my self. I think it's worth using that, cover my self. I think the word self is messed up. Okay, anyway, the Gemara always asks, not always, but it asks what was his starting position and what was his end position, and you need you need both because the starting position led to the end position, but the end position is the final uh, alacha and the final way that we're going to be uh, understanding whether it's a pasuk or uh, or a mishnah. Good. So that's his first rule: always bring your proofs or your kashas from the conclusion of a debate, not from the beginning or the middle. Now. He says like this: Hatafisa b'hastiri hiba arba apanim. If you want to know how a person attacks another person, or um, uh, um, destroys his argument, it's done in one of four ways. The first way, Osh einu b'devarav The first way, the first attack is that there's no chiddush in what you're saying. Vizeshikatu b'maika mashman pishita. That's the first attack. Wait, you're not telling us anything new. The second way is kafalamosa. What you're saying, we know already. Not that you're not saying anything, anything new, because it may be new, but someone said that new idea before, so why do you have to repeat it? Now, we just <laughs> learned <laughs> in Malitza, you're allowed to repeat for Ephesus, but, but the Gemara is about communication, not about motivation. So if something, so nothing, nothing is repeated uh, at all, and if it is repeated, so we know that we missed the point. So that's the second way that you there's an attack, which is what you're saying. We all, is a chiddush, but that chiddush is already said already. So it's kaful, it's repeated, but most are just extraneous. Vezesh amra tenina chadazim. That's when the Gemara says, wait, we will learn this. We we were taught this chiddush once. What do you, what what new idea are you bringing to it? O Shaham, the third way. So the first one was, it was Pashik, what you're saying. There's no Chiddush in it at all. The second is, it's repetitious. It is a Chiddush, but we learned that Chiddush somewhere else. The third way is, O Shaham Shekha. This is the, the one we're most, uh, <clears throat> most familiar with, where the opponent says what you're saying is, 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 uh, is false. And the way you prove someone false, he says, is in two ways. One is going to be mitzad atzmo or mimakam You're going to show that something is false through an internal contradiction or from an external contradiction. Let him spell it out. O mitzad atzmo, shedivarav sosrim zed zed. Shedivarav sosrim zed lize. Vize shouldn't have a period after it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that his words are, are internally self-contradictory. Uh, contradictory. Okay, kasha. That's when the Gemara says, "Wait a minute, this text is internally inconsistent, or uh, worse than inconsistent. Uh, it's um, it's uh, it's uh, uh, refuting itself." Hogufa kasha or kasha reisha sefer. When you have a mishnah and the and the the, re, the, the first statement uh, comes in conflict with the second statement, it denies the second statement or vice versa. Okay, so that's called an internal contradiction. The second way to say something is wrong is by showing that it's wrong because there's another place that says differently. Rutzini, what do I mean? Shahastira lezeh hamamra humi makamacher that the statement 
will be false because I show you another statement that contradicts it. Vizeshoma the Haitanya, didn't we learn in a Brisa oh uh Omar Ploni? Didn't Ploni say the opposite to what you're saying? Okay, so that's the that's the um the four ways, which is really three ways, uh, which are two, correct? Because uh, there's there's the you either say pshita, no chiddush, or you say wait a minute, chiddush, but you repeated it, or there's two ways to say that there's something's false. You can either show it's internally inconsistent and contradictory, or it's contradicts something from another statement. Very good. Now he says like this: "Ein hach, ein chachmas adam magas ella ad makom shesifarav migian." He says the wisdom of man can only reach to the place where his books reach. Wow. Ulachain, <laughs> Yimkor Adam Kor Mashiyesh Lo Viknes Svarim. Now, in his time, it wasn't like our time where you could, you know, go to a little store. And I, I remember some uh, Feldheim told me that in America, you know, you couldn't even when he was a kid, you couldn't even find a whole shas. There was just some public commons around, you know, as he got into the publishing business. But uh, it used to be that books were very, very precious. Imagine when they were written at this time. These people. Uh, this is still the time around 14, uh, 1533 is the printing press. So this is around the time. Of, uh, Much I before think he was, I think he lived in the 1300s. But the point is, uh, I think f yes, uh, he lived before the Gerusvad, right, right before it for like a hundred years. You're right, Thir at the end of the 1300s, the beginning of the 14, but before Gerusvad. But um, but the point being. Uh, uh, the 1533 is way after him. I mean, books were very, very valuable, very valuable. So he says, it, but he says it's worth to sell everything and buy books, because your knowledge can only extend to the wisdom. And it also, the books in those days were written by wise people. Now we have what's called the democratization of information. So any, any. Any fool now can write a message and, and do graffiti on a wall or on a website. You know, there's no wisdom in it. But it used to be that the only people that who could who could write a book were, was someone that had something to say. Great chacham. So, and that was the source of wisdom because your own mind can't um, open all the gates of wisdom. Hashem's world is way, way too complicated. So he says, sell everything you have in order to buy books, because in those books you'll be able to get wisdom. He says, sell everything you have and buy books. He gives an example. If you don't have the books of the Gemara, then you're not going to be able to master the, the, the Torah. If you don't have the books on medicine and on logic and on all the wisdoms, you're not going to be a bakibo. These were the years where the people were very, very well rounded. I mean, you know, medicine, science were, were just part of, of Hashem's wisdom, especially in the Sephardic world. There wasn't this. Um, this um, uh, focus uh, exclusively on on on, uh, on learning. Okay, they're much more open to Hashem's wisdom. They saw it everywhere. So what's the difference? If uh, it's all Hashem's wisdom, what's the difference? If it's mathematics or it's medicine or okay. He says Perish Rashi Zal Al Konul Chachaver, which is Perkiavos. He says two pashats. What does it mean to buy a chaver? One is Chaber Mamish, get a friend that you can talk out your Torah with and that you can hear his Torah and through dialogue you can get to the Emes of Torah. And some, some, some people say you have to, a good Chaber is a book because in that book you'll get the wisdom. I mean, if you don't have the Mishnah, you don't have the Gemara, so you don't have Torah. Okay. And he says, 
והקור בספרים שאולם הוא בכלל ויהי חייך תלוי מלך מנגד. Very powerful statement. He says, if you borrow books from people, you're in this terrible, terrible uh, uh, statement to Moshe Rabbeinu that your life is suspended against you. Why? Because the guy can come back and take the books away. So you're always hanging in the air, you know, on a thread because it'd be very nice you borrowed it, but he's going to want the book back. So he says, spend everything you have and buy Sfarim, he says. Umi sheyesh lo Sfarim, hem nevim o sol yedei chachma vadas. Ki hi chayecha baruch yamecha. He says, a person who has books that will bring them to, 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 to wisdom and knowledge because that's your life and the length of your days. So that's what he says. Baruch Hashem le'elam, amen v'amen. Upo nishalmu darchei ha-talmud me'arav ha-godol. Kavod merenu ha-arav. Yitzach kan pan ton. Mazel tov, mazel tov, mazel tov. Mazel tov. Shkayach. That's another very vital sefer. Okay. So, um, we have a lot of information that we've gone through. Uh, both in this Sefer and uh, in, in, in Der Tfunos, in Sefi Gayon, and now in Melitza, which we're around halfway through. The question, the, the, the challenge is uh, to apply it to our everyday learning. Okay? And what I would like to do, if, if, uh, if you're asking, what I would like to do is continue this half an hour year at the end until we finish Melitza and start doing a actual live piece in the, in the Gemara. And of course the Gemara that I'm always involved in is Baba Kama. I think it's a, a fantastic um, uh, <clears throat> example of a topic that we're involved with personally, which is called damage, and the interaction between Svarich Yitzona, what you would think, and what the Torah demands. So we'll be able to, Bezat Hashem, uh, hopefully by bringing these methods now in to our learning, to try to understand more clearly what we're doing. Okay, We, we may not... Uh, I personally think that the, the that understanding is a mystical activity. Okay, a lot of the things that we're doing is understanding uh, consciously the, the the rules of the game. But how you put two things together is uh, a very, uh, I would say, a mystical experience. Okay, now you're going to have to prove your point, whatever you put together or whatever you take apart. So that has a certain amount of form that we're going to have to be involved with. But um, but there's a very uh, Hashem kiten dasus luna. Hashem is the one that gives das and understanding. And when you understand something, uh, and you say a svara, which is to, to understand something, that's a that's a very very big gift of a kodesh baruch uh, Because where did it come from? It doesn't come from you. I mean, who are you? I mean, did you? It's a new idea. You never heard of this concept. So that's a real matana from a kodesh baruch and it's it's very very. Uh, it's very, very uh, sacred, very, very, very Kurdish, that idea. But in order to be focused on the message, you have to understand the form. Because the, the message comes as, a, as, a, as he starts in the Sefer. The beginning of the Sefer was the first rules to be medaktek on Lashen. You have to see the words and understand that message clearly. After you understand the message clearly, then you can go to, is the message consistent, is the message contradictory, and the learning begins to develop and to happen. So what we'd like, what I'd like to do is to pick a piece in uh, Baba Kama. I'm going to pick a very big piece. Uh, uh, I'm going to do, what I'd like to do with you is the Nachlas David on Metav, the beginning of Baba Kama, uh, says every word there, of course, is is brilliant and deep. But I would like to focus on the the the, the din of Meitav Sadeu Meitav Karki Yishalem. So we'll try to do it as in in a. I can only present as far as I've learned in the conscious way. I'd like to start with the Chumash 
uh, organize the Chumash, so to speak, divide it into its parts, then go to the Mishnah and see what it has to Mechadesh, and then continue along through the Rishonim and Vezit Hashem all the way down the line till we get to the Shulchan Aruch. That would be a, a wonderful thing. Sounds and good. all the time, all the time trying to integrate what we've done. Okay, so the classes won't be as what I mean formal. I, I would I would like to now switch the format a little to, to much more participation. I like you now to talk and, and I to talk, and we could talk things out okay. uh, more than presenting a, a lecture because the, this was all just material, very important material, just to give us the rules of the game. Right. But now we have to see the rules happening, and that's not uh, and that's not a lecture. As Rabbi Goldstein used to call it a workshop or a. Right. The, 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 well, we're, okay. going to, we're going to have to keep the rule book handy because although I always had a mind there to each share to review what we learned, somehow it just never happened. So I don't really remember that much. Right. We'll have to. Um, okay, no, no, no. I know we're going to we're going to into we're going to bring things back. Right, we're going to right. look at the safer. We're going to we're going to say, well, what does this remind you of? We're going to, it's going to be it's going to be much more fluid because because that's who we are and what we have to do. But. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It's not going to be a formal lecture. I don't know if even people would be interested in listening to it. It doesn't really interest me because now it's a very – without the integration of the material, there's very little gain. Okay? Right. So that's what I'd love to do. If we can do that and then we could show what we've gained consciously, then we've said, okay, this is, we, we've grown and we've developed. Okay? Right. So Be'ezut Hashem, we'll, 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 uh, next week we'll, we'll, uh, we'll start off with our uh, – with our uh, class in uh, in Malitza, and then in the second half hour we'll start slowly, slowly to to investigate uh, Baba Kama and focusing on the Meitav aspect of it. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> sounds like a plan. I'm so which topic? Which, which topic is Meitav? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to try to, to see if I have time to prepare over Shabbos. Yeah, yeah. Prepare. What, We're reading. That, read that? That's the beginning. That's the beginning. It's of, actually. Um, it's going to. It's actually not so simple. It, it, it's. It's. Um, You'll read Metas today. I think it's Tess. It starts in a few different places, but we'll, I, I'd like to really start uh, with Olive Base. You oh, so I shouldn't really prepare? Like to start. Maybe I shouldn't prepare. Uh, but I'm not preparing. No, 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 no. You should prepare. Okay. But you can read. You can read Mishpatim. I, I'll see how to present it. You see, because it's a, actually when I when I do my my uh, my like uh, introductory type things, I really start with. Uh, with uh, the Arba Avos and the Machlokas Rashi, but I I would rather. I would rather go to the core, because the Nafas David is a, a man of intense eon. So, and he takes us down the various levels. So instead of just saying, you know, you, what's the Havmina Rash, what's the Maskana, here we have someone who's going to take us through the whole uh, gamut, right from the Chumash Mishnah, uh, uh, Gemara, Rishon, and uh, Anah, Chronim. So that's a, he's, in the end, he's, there's going to be a three-way machlokus between uh, the Rambam and the Tosfos and the Ri, I believe, and he's going to explain how they understood the Gemara through it. But that's a, that's all, you know, background information, and you, you're welcome to learn as much or as little as you like. Uh, I think it's uh, it's fantastic. There's no the, now we're in the 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 element of understanding. <laughs> we're, okay. Up to now, we've been in the element of rules. So now we have to understand. Understand right. is fantastic. Okay, it's been great, and I'm I'm really really happy that you've uh, you've you know gone through the system so to speak all these svarim, and uh, now we can have the fun of learning, and uh, that's really what we're all about. Right. Okay. okay. Have a great day. Very good. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Week. Okay. Goodbye. Okay. Called.